All right, in this video, we're going to talk about image gradient in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump right into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll see how we could get these two images here and the difference between the two. Okay, so what is image gradient? Uh, the idea is to find the first or second derivative of an image, and we'll see how that works. Okay, so why do we need it? It's good for things like edge detection, for feature extraction, and also image enhancement. So maybe sometimes you have an image, and there's parts of the image you want to identify. Um, this is good for those applications. So how does it work exactly? Uh, you have a filter that you convolve with, and what you convolve with is called a kernel. There's typically three different types. These are the more popular ones. So you have the Sobel X, Sobel Y. These two here are first order derivative kernels. And notice the structure here is negative one, negative two, negative one, zeros in the middle, and then one, two, one. And for the Sobel Y, it's gonna be um, transpose. So it's gonna be rows instead of columns. And for the Laplacian, this one is gonna be a second order derivative. You see a negative four in the middle, and then ones in the four locations here, okay? So you'll just have an image, and then you convolve it with this filter and this is for three by threes, but typically you could expand this to different sizes. And we'll see how in some of the coding examples, how we could expand that to different cases. Okay, so let's jump right into a coding example. Okay, so as usual, let's go ahead and import some of the modules that we'll need. So let's go ahead and do import cv2 as cv, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and import um, numpy as mp and then import os. And we're going to call our function here, uh, let's call it image gradient. And we have our if name equals main here. And we'll call our image gradient. Okay, so inside our function, let's go ahead and read our image. So root equals os dot get cwd. And then we have our path, image path equals, so we have os.path.join here, pass in root, and our folder is demo images, and it's called tessa.jpg. And we're gonna read it in as a grayscale because typically um, gradients, we deal with uh, grayscale images. So cv um, read, and then we'll pass in the path, and then the cv. Dot, um, um, read grayscale option here. And let's go ahead and take a look at our picture. So plt.figure, plt.show, um, and we'll pass in our image. Uh, but first off, let's go ahead and make a subplot. So plt.subplot, and we're gonna go do a two, two, one here. Okay, so that's our image. And lastly, we'll just do a plt.show to show our image here. So if I go ahead and run this file, we should see our picture show up. Okay, so that is our picture. And we can also do a C map here if we wanted to um, see it all in grace instead of color. So if I run this again, we should see it all in grayscale. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's first take a look at the Laplacian. So we're gonna call this Laplacian and CV. The function is also called Laplacian and takes the input as the image and then the D depth. Um, this here, we're gonna pass in the, the type here, which we're gonna be 64. And this is for high resolution. And then case size, we're gonna pass in 21, we're gonna use a pretty big kernel because our image is a uh, pretty high resolution. So plt.subplot here and then 222 two, two, is gonna be our second image. And plt.umshow will plot our uh, Laplacian and then see map of gray. Okay, so if I run this, we should see our image here. So notice it looks like nothing at first, but if we zoom in, to the Tesla logo, for instance, 
we could see the edges of the Tesla logo has been identified. Um, so that's for Laplacian, it's usually uh, unidirectional. And when we look at the other filters, you'll, you'll see more of the difference why we call this a uh, unidirectional. Um, but essentially, it's, it's sensitive to both the X and Y direction. Okay, so let's take a look at the other filters. Well, um, there's actually ways to generate the kernel if you're interested in the kernel. So we'll take a look at that. So let's say we have kx, ky. The function is going to be called uh, cv.get deriv kernels. And then here we pass in the derivative in the x direction, which will be the first order, and then 0 in the y. And let's say we're passing in the 3, and we'll see how it looks like. So if we do print, and then ky matrix multiply kx.transpose, and if I run this, we should see our kernel here. Let's go ahead and close this image for now. But if I drag this over, you can see this is our kernel. So this matched what we saw in the beginning. Okay. So let's go ahead and use this filter, um, but with the Sobel function itself, since it's built in. So you could do cv.sobel here. So here it'll take in the image. And then again, the second argument is going to be the cv. Uh, 64 so this will guarantee a high resolution so the issue is if you have two edges sometimes you use a lower resolution for the data type then you may miss an edge okay so that's why we're going with the highest resolution so here we do a case size equals 21 and if I do plt dot subplot and two two three and plt dot um show and we'll pass in my sobel x and C map of gray. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this, we should see our Sobel X. So if you notice, uh, you can kind of see the, the lines, edges in the X direction or the vertical. And if I zoom into the logo, we can see that uh, this logo here has captured a lot of the edges on the right and left side, but top and bottom, not so much. Okay, so if we go ahead and uh, do the same exercise for uh, the Y, I'm just going to do a little tweak here, make this 0, make this 1. This will stay the same. And then Sobel here, um, this will be a 0 and then a 1. So we're just switching the X and Y. And then go ahead and modify this. And then this one here, we could modify to be a Y. Okay, so now we should see our Sobel Y. So if I run this, we'll take a look how that looks like. So first off, you can see our kernel here. It has been transposed as we expected. And then in here, if we look at the actual image, um, you can notice here some of the horizontal lines or in the Y direction has become more prominent. And if we zoom into the logo, we can start comparing the difference. Okay, so notice that for the Laplacian on the top right, the edges in both x, y is all pretty clear. Whereas here in the Sobel y, the horizontal is more clear and the vertical ones are kind of faded, right? But with the Sobel x, you can see the vertical or in the x direction, it's a lot more prominent, okay? So that's the main difference with the different kernels. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.